Did I need to be wearing a kilt while baking bread from this recipe inspired by traditional Scottish bakers? No. No, I didn't. Middle shelf, 25th book from the left, page 92. The Laurel's Kitchen Bread Book by Laurel Robertson. Scottish sponge bread? I've been eating and baking fresh bread for as long as I can remember, going back to childhood. Up until my most recent purge, I think the majority of the cookbooks on my shelves were about bread baking. I've pared things down to just the essentials, and probably the most essential book in the collection is today's. It has techniques and in-depth explanations for all kinds of bread, all kinds of grains, regional breads, basics. Everything is in there, and it's it's well written. If there was just one bread book that I had in my collection, it would probably be this one. I was excited that this recipe was chosen for us because it's got a number of uh, techniques that I like to use, and uh, it's for a large batch of bread, and normally I just bake a little at a time. The recipe itself uses some shortcuts uh, that she got from traditional Scottish bakers who bake up large batches of bread without the use of machinery. I do have a stand mixer with a dough hook, but I wanted to follow uh, the by hand instructions because I find the kneading of bread to be therapeutic and the recipe, at least at first, uh, says that this is an easy way to do multiple loaves of bread. Uh, later on in the recipe, it does say that uh, it's a bit of a challenge and that the last batch of hand kneading uh, has to be done for what she describes as 20 athletic minutes. But uh, apart from that, it actually does seem like it's going to be quite simple. So let's give it a go. In bread baking terms, a sponge is a wet starter dough that has a, a long ferment and is used to work the gluten in the, the flour, get things nice and stretchy, and also allow the yeast uh, to get a chance to get really good and strong before you make the main bread dough. In this particular recipe, the advantage of starting with a sponge is you can use a very high quality bread flour that has a high gluten content uh, and let it work over a long time, in this case about 18 hours, that gets things nice and stretchy, really gets the, the gluten worked up. The sponge here is uh, just a simple mix of water, yeast, and a good high gluten bread flour, and a little bit of sweetener. In this case, I used maple syrup, and that's it. We'll mix it all up. Oh, a little bit of salt also. Uh, and then when we add that to the regular dough that we'll make the next day, for that dough we can use flour that has uh, a lower gluten content, like a, a whole wheat flour or other grain altogether, like, you know, a rye or oat flour or whatnot, and let the gluten that has been developed in the sponge do the heavy lifting. Uh, literally of the bread dough as it's baking get things nice and light and bubbly inside so the sponge is mixed up uh, kneaded it for 10 minutes uh, it was nice and sticky put it in a container and just let it sit out on the counter for 18 hours and came back the next day my sponge has been sitting happily bubbling away and so uh, we are going to mix that up with a fresh batch of flour and water and salt and honey and oil and let it all rise again and tonight make some bread from it. You can see it's all it's all jiggly. Pretty cool. And I have a great big bowl that we're gonna mix in and it has already measured uh, some warm water and the honey and the salt and the oil. So I'm just gonna dump in the sponge you can see how stretchy it is. So this is that high gluten bread flour. Oh yeah. I've got this whole wheat flour for the main addition. We're gonna have six cups of this. Uh, and this had, uh, in the sponge, we had six cups of the high gluten flour. And then uh, the recipe said uh, three cups of a uh, like a pastry flour or something else that's low, very low in gluten. And my store didn't have pastry flour in stock, 
uh, but it did have this, uh, which is an all-purpose flour. Uh, they specifically said it has a low gluten content uh, just because of the kind of wheat that it is. So we'll have three cups of this. So nine cups altogether. I'm gonna go ahead and dig in and use my hands. It also says to uh, use your fists at this point to help things come together. We wanna get all of that flour worked into the sponge. It doesn't seem too stiff at all. So I don't think I'm gonna to need to add any more water. Set a timer and we'll just knead it uh, as actively as we can for 20 minutes. As it gets sticky, I'll just add some more flour. Hey Siri, stop, thank you. Okay, that was definitely an athletic 20 minutes. As you can see, it's fairly smooth. It's got some shine to it. I think we can say that's successful. The recipe now says uh, that we take this, just leave it in the bowl and set it somewhere warm, 80 or 90 degrees. Uh, for an hour. And you can see it's uh, inflated nicely. Uh, so we're just going to punch it down, deflate it, and then put it back in uh, to the warm place and let it sit for another 45 minutes to an hour. So nice fun part, punch it down. And I'll form it into a ball again. Turn it over. and we'll let it puff up for another 45 minutes to an hour. So after this rise, the recipe goes in two different directions. We can punch it down here and then divide it into five individual loaves or go the traditional Scottish method, they say, and uh, make four loaves, but cook them all in the same pan so that the loaves all touch. And that's what I opted for. I just don't have five individual loaf pans. So I'm shaping the dough into four balls and we'll let them sit and relax for 10 minutes before we form them into the actual loaves. After 10 minutes, the dough's relaxed enough that I can shape them into ovals without worrying about them being too springy or anything from that rise. Uh, so I'm putting them into a pan that I buttered and in between each loaf, as I put it in the pan, I butter the sides and this will let them pull apart more easily after they're baked. Stretch them out, put the seam on the bottom and drop it into the pan. Uh, brush it all with butter and then we're gonna let them rise again. The recipe didn't say for how long, uh, but just using my intuition, I know it's gonna be a little bit less than the last rise. So I'm gonna be about a half hour or so, we'll check on them. They look great after half an hour, so I buttered them and we'll put them in a 350 oven for about an hour and a half, a good long time. All right, <clears throat> it's been an hour and 15 minutes and they sound hollow, got a good crust to them. I'm gonna say they're done, hopefully they're done. And here's the final product. They cooled off in the pan just for a few minutes and then I turned them over onto the rack and they just popped right apart since we brushed them with butter in between the loaves and they just look fantastic. Uh, the insides are light and fluffy. As you can see, the crust is not too hard. The butter will soften that up even more and I cannot wait to dig right into these. So I waited for it to cool off just enough to handle. It's not too hot, it didn't rip apart. Uh, and look how soft and fluffy that is. I'm gonna spread some uh, honey butter on it and give it a taste. Okay, 
this is worth every bit of athleticism that went into it. It was much more work than the usual uh, no need method of bread baking that I typically do uh, several times a week. I make little loaves of bread. This was way more work, but uh, it's a different kind of bread altogether. It's, it's light, it's fluffy, even though it's whole grains, it's everything you would want a good slice of sandwich bread to be. And I am definitely going to be making batches of bread like this uh, again. Maybe not every week, but pretty often because this is well worth the effort. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Siri, for pointing me to this one. Um, yeah, another winner. Thank you.